Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. A cabinet minister's brother and two others are gunned down over the weekend. A former national athlete faces fraud charges here in the magistrate's court. News is brought to you by Alive. Welcome to Our News and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Top news tonight. The brother of Transport Minister Ronald Walt is among three people murdered in separate incidents over a holiday weekend book ended by bloodshed. On the heels of these latest killings, Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist said crime is still unacceptably high. Jillian Gray reports. Three men were gunned down over the weekend in three separate shooting incidents. One of the victims was Cabinet Minister Renward Wells' brother. While expressing his condolences to his colleague, Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist said crime is still unacceptably high. We have an unacceptable level of crime and violence in this country. Uh, though the, tr the trend has been coming down, uh, it, as long as there is one person uh, who is... Uh, um, losing their life uh, to senseless violence, um, it's one too many. Officers on Tuesday reported that a man was shot shortly after 1 a.m. on Bahama Avenue. That killing came 48 hours after two separate shootings claimed the lives of two men on Sunday. Around 3 p.m. Sunday, a gunman shot and killed a man off East Street. Just 12 hours before that shooting, an assailant shot Cabrillo Wells multiple times in Ridgeland Park. Wells, who is the brother of Cabinet Minister Renward Wells, was pronounced dead at the scene. I had an opportunity to speak to, to my colleague uh, and to offer, offer my condolences, but whether it's a Cabinet Minister or uh, anybody else, there's, there's no difference. I mean, murder affects us all. Dame said while one murder is one too many, the numbers are reflecting that they are moving in the right direction and will have a record-breaking year of low crime statistics. We had a, a period, a month, where we would have had, what, about maybe four? And we had a, a tremendous lull in between. Um, listen, this is the world that we're living in. We're not, you, 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 you can't find any country you can boast about having a zero murder rate, okay? And so, I mean, these are the challenges that we'll have to deal with from time to time. We clearly understand that. But I have every confidence that the police are on top of things. Despite the spree of killings, the national security minister insists that crime is still down. He added that officers are continuing their work to ensure that the public is safe. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jillian Gray. Meanwhile, police on Grand Bahama say one of two men shot during an incident on East Sunrise Highway last month has died. According to reports, a gunman shot two men outside a business shortly before 4 a.m. on July 7th. One of the men was shot in the upper body and the other was shot in the lower part of his body. One month later, police say one of those men passed away in Rand Memorial Hospital on Tuesday at 9.25 a.m. This brings the murder count for the year to 53. While well, police shot and killed a man in Fox Hill after he allegedly pointed a gun at officers early this morning. According to police, officers were responding to reports of gunfire on Grand Street shortly after 2 a.m. when they encountered a man who was acting in a suspicious manner. According to the police report, as officers approached the suspect, he produced a firearm, pointed it in the direction of officers, which resulted in a struggle between the suspect and officers. Police then shot the suspect. He was later pronounced dead on the scene. Police said officers recovered a black handgun on the scene. In other news, FNM MP Frederick McElpine is firing back at calls for his resignation from the party from his own constituency association. McElpine says that's not happening, adding the fact that this issue has been made public shows how petty the FNM's leadership has become. Jasmine Brown reports. McElpine quickly responded to that call for his resignation today, and he didn't hold back. These calls show me how petty leadership in the national movement has become because people actually know what the real deal is. 
Michael Pine, who was out of the country, was responding to comments printed in Monday's edition of the Tribune newspaper, where Pine Ridge Association chairperson Vernette Munnings was quoted as saying the association feels as though Michael Pine should resign in the best interests of his constituency. Munnings also insisted she did not know what Michael Pine was holding out for. The Pine Ridge MP says he isn't holding out for anything and sees no reason for him to leave the party. FNM Chairman Carl Culmer said the party has not received a formal request from the Pine Ridge Constituency Association to remove McElpine. Meanwhile, Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquest says the rules are the rules, adding that he doesn't think the turmoil in Pine Ridge will impact the FNM's chances during the next general election. I think, uh, you know, this makes us uh, stronger, as a matter of fact. Uh, we are a democratic organization. Um, the, uh, the, the, the constituents uh, at, are the ultimate um, um, deciders of uh, who represent them, who they want to represent them. Uh, and that process works its way up through the party. Um, and again, we are uh, committed to de de democracy and to uh, ensuring that uh, the person that is selected in any constituency to represent the people actually do represent the people. Michael Pine has not been shy about criticizing the FNM administration over the VAT hike last year or the decision to relocate the general post office to a building owned by then Cabinet Minister Brent Simonette. I have not fallen away from the tenants of the party. I have stuck true to what the party campaigned on. They were the ones who said it was going to be a people's time and they were going to look out for the small man. I'm still sticking with those tenants. Who strayed? Frederick McElvey? Or has the party leadership strayed from what they originally said they would do? You really want to get rid of a Frederick McElvey for what? because he voted against that. Michael Pine asserted the current FNM administration is a far cry from what the party once stood for. I've never seen a political organization who has fallen seeking rather than trying to bring people together and, and they can't afford to lose nobody. is seeking to publicly ask me to remove myself from the free national movement, the party that I fought for and helped them to be where they are today. Many people would go out on a limb and say, many FNM supporters will tell you they do not recognize this present national movement. They, don't, they do not recognize them. Um, they do not see them as the FNM they knew under the administration of the former Prime Minister, uh, the Right Honorable Hubert A. Ingram. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. A former national triple jumper was arraigned on multiple fraud charges in the magistrate's court today. George O'Bain has the story. 41-year-old Alan Mortimer, a former national athlete who represented the country as a triple jumper, was brought before Magistrate Darrance Roll Davis to face seven counts of credit by fraud charges. It is alleged that between January 1st and January 31st, the accused, incurring a debt at Fusion Superplex, obtained a credit in the amount of $266.44 by means of fraud. Mortimer also allegedly obtained another credit in the amount of $269.68 by means of fraud in February, $262 by means of fraud in March, $367 in April, $1,305 in credit in May, and $1,141 between June and July. Mortimer also faces attempted credit by fraud charges. It is alleged that on July 12th, Mortimer attempted to defraud Western Air of $400.88. Then on July 19th, he attempted to obtain credit from Western Air on two occasions in the amount of $246.41 and $225.08 and again on July 21st in the amount of $345.96. Mortimer was represented by attorney Ian Cargill. He entered a not guilty plea to all charges and will return to court on October 15th for the beginning of trial. He has been remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections. Reporting for R News, I'm Georgie O'Bain. On the heels of police brutality claims in Exuma, National Security Minister Marvin Dames asserted today that a thorough investigation will be carried out and the police force will not cover up for anyone. He and his officers are taking this very seriously and will ensure 
that at the end of the day, justice prevails. And so we all will be watching. What started as a fun Saturday night at Rollville Regatta for cousins Deja Lang and Aliyah Bain ended with both in the back of a police car, bruised and bloodied, but at the hands of a police officer, they claim. When they spoke with our news upon their return to Nassau yesterday, the pair fought back tears upon telling their story of being punched and ginked. And when photos surfaced online, the public began demanding answers. A team was uh, dispatched uh, to the island of Exuma and commenced investigations almost immediately. Um, and so you will see very shortly the end results of those investigations. We're not here to cover for anybody. One of the young women claimed that she wasn't involved in the incident but only went in the cop car to accompany her cousin. But upon telling officers they were wrong for how they handled the situation, she too was left bloodied. The issue once again brings to the forefront the need for body cams for all police officers. Dame said a contract should be signed by next month, but he said body cams are not. Officers must remember the oath they've taken. No one is above the law. Whether you're in uniform or whether you are in public life, nobody is above the law. And where it is found out at the end of the day that persons, whether they're law enforcement officers or public officials, are in breach of the law, they will be treated uh, like anyone else. The issue also calls into question the trust the public has for police officers. Dame said while there are bad apples, the force is still comprised of mostly honorable men and women. I hasten to say that the vast majority of police officers are, are law-abiding citizens and, and frowned upon officers who uh, abuse their authority, all right, and will have, will have no problems ensuring that those officers who abuse their authority are held accountable for their actions. PLP leader Philip Davis labeling last Friday's water leak at the General Post Office an embarrassing debacle for the Minnesota administration. The General Post Office sustained water damage as a result of a pipe bursting during upgrades to the sprinkler system. Officials said the affected mail was dried out and the owners were being notified of the incident. You know, someone, someone told me in Cat Island over the weekend, God don't like ugly. This latest embarrassment, embarrassing debacle at the post office recalls the shameful act of self-dealing and conflict of interest, which brought this public post office to the Town Center Mall in the first place. The General Post Office was relocated to Town Center Mall in May after months of delays and years of complaints from employees over the substandard conditions at the former East Hill Street location. The mall is co-owned by former Cabinet Minister Brent Simonet. The opposition has repeatedly slammed the move. The incompetence of the FM government has not only created an unsafe workplace, compromising the health, safety, and well-being of scores of workers. But the controversial House resolution is likely to create a constitutional crisis subject to a credible legal challenge. Still to come, Exuma residents share their concerns. Plus, the PLP explains its candidate selection process. Stay tuned.